I'm editing this video with it. Interesting. One of my earlier reactions on this channel was to someone named Gox Art. And at this point, you probably know who he is because he's all over YouTube. And he's posted a couple more times since then. And I've gotten quite a few comments asking me to react to more of his videos and break it down from an editor's perspective. So with that being said, today we're gonna look at when you finally go out of your comfort zone. Let's check it out. Lately, I've had one obsession. Creating an artwork where I mix all of my passions together. My drawing, painting and animation. My photography, my filmmaking and music. But it's not an easy... <sighs> yep, so he's implemented some more animation quite a bit more animation in this one specifically as far as the intro goes at the beginning it starts off with the black screen and then there's some kind of clicking noise behind it that opens up the first shot and there's also kind of a subtle riser behind it as well for the first few seconds and then it and then it cuts I guess, you know, bringing some more tension to the beginning. And also the shots here have, which I saw this with the last reaction that I just did, a lot of contrasting colors when it comes to the separate shots that are being cut through. And there's also a subtle like clicking throughout. And then you hear the sound effect of his pen or pencil hitting the desk and it's quiet and he's talking over it, which introduces his voiceover. Lately. And then the animation that he introduced here on the notebook kind of has a movement to it. It's not perfectly, the scale is perfectly tracked, but it's moving around on the, on the, on the notebook to pretty much give you that feeling of animation instead of it being perfectly still or tracked. And obviously it animates in as well creating an artwork where I mix all of my passions together. Okay, actually, now that I look at it a little bit more, I think I might know how you achieve that effect. So here, clearly, it's not uh, separated from the notebook. It's actually written down inside of it. So I think what he probably did was set up the notebook and then get a picture and then keyed out the white behind it. And then in different sections in editing post-production, he popped up different aspects of the the design he just did here. And that's probably my best bet when it comes to how he achieved this specifically. Yeah. I mean, that's that just shows you how many different layers it takes to kind of, you know, put together a clean looking effect, even though it might be difficult to make. And then of course he has this highlight effect, which you can do easily if you have a mask on the grading layer and then add some keyframes and then lower the highlights on the outside so that it gives it that, that highlight look. And then you have the effect here, which also, you know, is a creative idea or creative, uh, creative choice. Yeah, so you can get this pretty simple. All he really did was recorded a head-on shot and then turned to the side and then recorded that and he has the two layers and one is faded or blended halfway to kind of cover half of his face pretty much but it's not an easy task i don't even think it's possible to do it with just one single brain the good thing is that i have to <coughs> oh my goodness sparkling water here really uh got me coughing anyway I let it play through after this, but yeah, that was pretty sick. Obviously he's got this moment where, you know, you have an overlay of a brain kind of scan hologram type of effect. He kind of, he just faded it in. I don't, I didn't see, I don't think it's tracked. You don't have to track it because, you know, he's standing still. Yeah, this shot pretty much, I mean, you can see it on some of the other cutouts, like right here around his glasses with rotoscoping. It's very something I have realized throughout the times I have had to rotoscope with glasses is it's very difficult to do that. 
obviously because the glasses are clear if you're looking in a certain direction. And so you can tell when something's rotoscoped, especially if somebody has glasses, by looking at the glasses. And so essentially right here, you can see the frame isn't showing. Pretty much what that tells me is he rotoscoped himself like 20 times and then just layered it throughout. Continuing on. That I have two, but one is external. This is the D7, the place where I've stored all of my videos, photos, and art for the last two years. The place where I created the last 30 videos of my different channels. Is this a sponsor or something? Right off the bat? I mean, hey, I use Samsung as well. If I just gotta say that to get a sponsor, then uh, right here. T7 Shield, if you're wondering. An extension of my hippocampus and what opened the doors to the biggest project of my career. So without further hey. ado, today I will be creating the super artwork. Our story starts on February 25th, 2024, with an email. Okay, that was a lot happening at once. You'll notice each and every, even with the soundtrack, every single majority of the clips, like wherever he was plugging in the SD card or plugging in different stuff, uh, there's a, a clicking sound like what happens whenever you plug in something. Extension of my hippocampus. And, and so it's all got sound design behind it. And like his other videos, there's film grain uh, implemented on it, which is part of his style that he's kind of built up throughout the years on YouTube. This is where I created the- You got a match cut, essentially, you know, different shots of the hard drive in the center and again keeping the pace of the music which gives you a lot more energy and stuff behind it uh you know when you're watching which we're only in the first minute so see how the rest of the video goes when it comes to pacing at least now a shot specifically that i want to talk about that is sick the part where the hard drive is floating in the air and it's rotating as well. Now there's multiple ways you can, you can make this. Either he straight up made a 3D render of the hard drive and animated it that way, or he set up so whatever the box things are called, where you can put a product in it and then spin it or rotate it or whatever, or he set up that and then applied it over and you know adjusted the color grade and lighting to kind of match the environment. And then obviously, the background, he could have easily just put a Gaussian blur over it and then use keyframes to adjust as it moves forward. But there's two different ways that I can think of that he could have achieved this. Either way, the ending result is pretty sick. So without further ado, today I will be creating the super. And yeah, there's a lot of, of creative freedom, especially with this project. There's like 30 different 20 different cutouts, blocks of different parts of his face that he's showing. The title of this first chapter, which he has, this is gonna be split into chapters, which he does a lot in his videos. And I've said it before, a lot of cinematic projects or videos, especially on YouTube that I've seen, are split up into multiple chapters to kind of give, give the video structure, a storyline. Yeah, one thing I have noticed with his, and I, had, I struggled with this last time, is he does so much stuff that it's difficult to, to kind of just keep the video playing for a long amount of time. So I'm gonna try and keep it playing a little bit longer so I'm not interrupting too much. I will be creating the super artwork. Our story starts on February 25th, 2024, with an email. It was 5 a.m. when I received it. Maybe because of coincidence or luck, I was awake at that time. So I got up and checked it out right away. Look outside, it said. So I did, and there was a mysterious package waiting for me. So, let's unbox it. Then, everything became a bit more clear. Inside, there were three Samsung SSDs one flight ticket to South Korea, and a very beautifully packaged letter, which said, Dear Gox, see you in Korea. We have something planned for you. Enjoy the gifts, and good luck with the super artwork. All the best, Samsung. And 
Okay, is this sponsored by Samsung? I'm trying to understand. Is this like a whole video sponsor or is he just like Samsung? I mean, it's okay if he does, but it's a lot of product placement uh, for a video that isn't sponsored. Let's see what happens. But anyway, covering that last minute that we just watched there, it was difficult not to pause, I'm not gonna lie, because it was a few different things I noticed. But, so he's using his iconic you know, jazzy type of style, which he uses a lot, at least from what I've seen. And then again, like early in the morning, the grading also is a good indication of that being early in the morning, kind of sunrise-ish before the sun rises. Something specifically that I did notice that I want to mention. So he's doing some layering when it comes to the sound design, because whenever he clicks on the email, his voiceover says, look outside. It's almost like he said it another time and overlaid it to where it was slightly off, but said differently. Did out right that way. Look outside. It Which is a creative decision, obviously, but I thought that was pretty interesting. Then everything became a bit more clear. Inside. From what I've seen, he likes to take away or add titles at different parts. So you'll notice how in chapter one, uh, he took away different letters and obviously the color grading is a little bit different. We got the yellows here and overall just throughout this project that I've seen, it's just very, very, uh, diverse when it comes to the colors. So yeah, it's pretty, he's a, uh, you know, being Gox. Dear Gox, see you in Korea. And then again, he has that highlight effect, like I said before, but this time he added some keyframing on the actual shape of the mask, which as you would guess, you know, all you gotta do is click the keyframe for the mask and then adjust it accordingly to the timing you want with what you're editing. And so he did that a lot, but it's not, it's not actually tracked to the paper. It's, it's kind of just on the screen, if that makes sense. All the best, Samsung. And that was the moment when I finally decided to go away and bring this idea to life. So I grabbed my sketchbook, my pencil, and began working on the sketch, or rather on the improvised plan. There it is. A slider, and it is a time lapse. I got people mad at me last time saying, "What you call it a you call it a, a speed ramp? Why would you call it a speed ramp? Time lapse. <sighs> Wrong choice of words. Time lapse, speed ramp. Very similar. Whether he sped this up in post, you could call it a speed ramp, or if he actually shot it like a time lapse. I don't know. We'll never know." Unless he comes out and says, you know, they did that. And that would be uh, embarrassing. But anyway, right off the bat, you know, we can see with this second chapter, you know, he added some, with the title of it, some tracking. And simply put, all he did was, you know, adjusted the, the scale to go back and then added a Gaussian blur over the title itself. Used keyframes and then adjusted accordingly to the timing of it going back with the camera. Now, I don't mean to call things out, but you can slightly see the title here on his hand. And once again, these these shots that he's getting right here, like of the, of the pen and all that are sick with the sound design of the pen drawing behind everything as well. Working on this sketch or rather on the improvised plan. A lot of attention to detail when it comes to production quality, which we know that he does. And it's definitely, yeah, I mean, he has not disappointed. I'll say that much. After a few hours, lots of tries and some reference pulled from my favorite artists, I got something I was happy with. So I scanned my plan, stored it in the T7, and then realized that I was in a bit of a problem. Okay. My flight is departing in three hours. And how much progress have I made packing for such a big trip this far? Well, none. So let's do it right now. I present to you the arsenal. Okay, for photos, the little boy. <laughs> all right, all right. 
Yeah, once again, we got we got some drums playing. Fits his, his overall style that he's working with here. Now, we have a simple blending that he did. Added the picture in post, and then he just adjusted it and lined it up to an actual recording of the screen as he backed up. And then he, he faded it real quick, so it gives it that blend into it. That's pretty uh, pretty clean. Pretty clean. Now, I don't know if he meant to do this on purpose. He probably did because a lot of, a lot of this stuff is intentional, but the drums kind of paused for a second and then it continued when the time flipped to one. My flight is departing in three hours. Very detailed, you know? And once again, throughout, he has like these risers and kind of like whooshes behind that give different different feels, whether there's tension that he wants to add and stuff like that. And then he goes silent, cuts the music and everything, just got his voice over into the next section. And how much progress have I made packing for such a big trip this far? Well, none. So let's do it right now. I present to you the arsenal. I'm going to assume from what I've heard is gonna be pretty high paced because he hasn't packed anything. And so the feeling he wants to give off is Kind of a rush. Okay, for photos, the little boy. It's small, compact, and sneaky. Perfect for street photography. And regarding storage, well, the T7. It's crazy fast, powerful, well-built, fits in my pocket, and it's way too stylish. Just like my dog Lapis. Bring in the heavy artillery. The beast. The 6K raw footage it records is absolutely incredible. Just like the file sizes. The only way I can use this. <laughs> I know what that's like. File sizes go up. Anyway, so far, yeah, my prediction is correct. He's he's just going through everything, all of the gear, all of the equipment and everything that he has and explaining it in a quick pace, uh, which he's rushing through it and gives it that, that feeling, especially with how he's cutting. He's cutting faster now. Let's see... Uh, Let's see how this next section goes. It's paired with the tank. T7 shield. A T7 on steroids. It's as fast, as powerful, and indestructible. The phone. Records really good footage. Makes calls, and I can watch Gox art on it. The T9. An absolute monster. Transfers 120 gigabytes in two minutes. It's time, shield it, and I'm editing this video with it. Mangoes. I like mangoes. Interesting. Interesting. We got another match cut there, but um, he added an interesting sound with his uh, voice over there. And I'm editing this video with it. I don't know if he did that on purpose or not. That was pretty interesting. He added sound design obviously behind it as it was zooming in and stuff like that. Mangoes. I like mangoes. Me oh, too. And this other less essential stuff too. It's 4 a.m. now. See you in Korea. Whoa. That is an interesting way to put a title. I'll say that much. After a 17 hour long flight, I arrived in Seoul, and it was something like I've never seen before. It was time to take the photos for my super artwork, and I had no time to lose. So I grabbed my camera and headed to the Han River, where I took the- Yeah, that's pretty sick. That shot's pretty sick. But yeah, you got the title, the way this is titled and, and kind of just shot down. Pretty uh, cinematic. First steals of what would become the best trip I've ever been on. The next day, I headed to the National Museum of Modern- Yeah, the pacing, I mean, here has slowed down quite a bit. And you can tell the cutting has slowed down as well. And we're halfway in the project. So this is, you know, around the part of a video that it would slow down. And once again, the color grading is very film look, cinematic, you know, very well done. Learn and contemporary art, where I stumbled upon this beautiful park and saw the cherry blossoms for the first time in my life.
Yeah. The trip had gone. These uh these angles and these shots are very, very good, very well done. You can tell uh, he knows what he's doing when it comes to the angles that he's getting with, uh, with this footage. Amazing so far, and I had taken more photos than I ever imagined. Slowly, I started building sort of a routine. I would film, take photos, and explore by day. And after returning to the hotel, I would transfer everything to the T9 and work on the super artwork by night. It was almost ready, but there still was the big day left. What happened next is something I will never forget. The main event of the trip. That morning, I headed 53 kilometers south of Seoul to Haseong, Samsung's nano city. Here I met Sangyu, Ilsu, and Yeonjin. Three absolute legends from the Samsung SSD team who showed me around the campus and then inside of the Samsung Semiconductor Factory. I had never seen anything. Whoa! Uh, I mean, there's not too much. He's got sound design here and there behind it, whooshes and, and stuff like that. But the overall pacing has stayed the same so far. And of course, you know, the music and everything kind of slowed down a little bit. But he did just do this effect with his eye. And essentially how I would assume, you know, he does this is he just took another clip, lowered the opacity, or maybe changed the blend mode, and then masked around his eye and then tracked it to his eye. Never seen anything like this before. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, that, yeah, that was tracked pretty well. So he probably used a, a specific thing to, to track it to his eye. This is where the brain of electronic devices are created. The device you're watching this video right now, your car, camera, and even fridge have microchips that likely were created right here. And not only that, this is also the place where the Samsung SSDs were born, developed, and manufactured. So it was only natural to add this to the heart of my super artwork. After this tour, I met with the rest of the Samsung team and we headed to Seong Sudong, where we filmed the last shots, took the last photos, and had the last meal of the trip. It was time to go back home. Now after having made some incredible new friends, with some of the best memories of any place I've been to, and with a super artwork, which was close to completion. All right. Uh, yeah, starting off here, he's done it a couple times in this video, but he did another kind of transition into the screen as he backed up with the camera, and then he just blended it and, you know, lined it up and all that. Yeah, he definitely likes to do that with this project, at least, which I've seen multiple times. Another shot wherever the, the hard drive was on his shoulder, right before you see this shot of him opening up to grab, like, the pencils or the pens and stuff, you can hear it being set down on the desk. Only natural to add this to the heart of my super art world. And then it cuts to him opening it and stuff like that, which is a subtle J cut that he added that kind of gives you, you know, a good transition into the next clip. With a super art work, which was close. Yeah, that's pretty sick. No, yeah, so with this, I mean, pretty much how I would guess he achieved it is obviously he has the separate cutouts and then it just simply animated it, you know, added different separate sections to move a certain way. And then obviously he has himself that's rotoscoped or he could have filmed it on a green screen. And then it kind of just zooms out and then shows the rest of the, the kind of looks like clip art. So let's finally finish it. I started by working on the face of Time lapse, time lapse. My character, as this is the main element of my super artwork. <laughs> After struggling getting the see through effect right, it was ready. So then I moved on to the hands. I added some sexy lines, some color, and once again I scanned it and stored it in my T7. Finally, it was time to add some movement to my super art. So I connected the drawing tablet to my SSD and tried to animate. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Movement to my super art. So I connected the drawing tablet to my SSD. 
He didn't eject first. Oh man. Oh man. And try to animate. There was only one thing left to do, because the super artwork oh, would be nothing wow. without a good score. This is where Dario Waff comes in. I have known him for 18 years now. He lives 10 steps away from me, and he is a certified hit maker. So I connected the T7 to his computer, and he started doing his magic. This project wouldn't have been possible without Samsung and their amazing SSDs. So make sure to check them out and download the super artwork for free with the link in the description. After a long time and lots of trial and error, our super artwork is finally ready. So as always, enjoy the reveal. Bye. He's got it again. He's got the Netflix background once again. But besides that, yeah, the artwork is uh, pretty insane. Now, I will say the only thing is he kind of already revealed a good portion of it, especially whenever he showed that one shot with him. And so because he showed that already, you kind of get the feeling that you've already seen it. Even though he's showing other sections, you know, that wasn't the, the full thing because he was added inside of it. But that's the only thing with this ending part right here is because he kind of already showed the whole thing, the reveal doesn't hit as hard as it could have if it was hidden or maybe if he showed a small section here, another small section there instead of the whole thing, if that makes sense. Thank you, Samsung, for sponsoring this video. But yeah, with, without a doubt, it's insane. He's extremely talented, and the stuff he does is, you know, <laughs> I mean, with art, with writing art and production art, because that is an art, videoing and editing and all that stuff, super talented. And credits, baby. No, yeah, that was, uh, that did not disappoint with the production quality and the editing behind it. But overall, yeah, I mean, you can tell why he has over 2 million subscribers because, you know, this is art. This is some serious stuff. Anyway, with that being said, that was, uh, that was Gox art when you finally get out of your comfort zone. Now, if you want to see the last reaction that I did on his other video, that was also, you know, pretty good. You can click over here to watch it. And that'll be all. I'll see you at the next edit.